Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love what you see here, reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, as we start our weekend with watches. This is your email concierge for buying everything you see on the show. All watches are in stock and for sale. We're looking to build inventory, buy, trade, or sell a watch. We pay cash, we pay fast, no upper limit on value paid. To buy, trade, or sell a watch, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. All right. Before we start our parade, let me remind you that this weekend I am auctioning off my personal Zin EZM 1.1. It's part of the Red Bar and Revolution Magazine Watch Fam Solidarity Auction for Ukraine. So all the proceeds are going to World Central Kitchen, which is feeding Ukrainian refugees in neighboring nations with upwards of 3.5 million refugees. That is a lot of food. We are going to auction special watches through Eric Koo's website, Loop This. So open up another window, keep me streaming, check out Eric Koo's website, Loop This, and the Watch Fam Solidarity for Ukraine auction. You can own my Zin EZM 1.1. Full boxes, papers, uncut, etc. Accessory strap, deployment clasp with dive extension, strap tool, and spare spring bars. All of this plus a handwritten note of thanks from me. It can be yours from me to you with love for Ukraine. All right. This is the watch I've promised you. By the way, go over to Charity Navigator and check out World Central Kitchen. If you have any questions about the cause, it is all on the up and up. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual GMT Master II 116710 LN Lunette Noir Black Bezel. It is the most sober and Teutonic of the Rolex G GMTs. Of the Rolex GMTs, this is the one that Hans Vilsdorf himself would have worn. As you can see, though made in Geneva, it has almost a Germanic quality about it, being relatively understated and looking almost more like a Rolex dive watch than the Aviator's GMT. 40 millimeters in diameter, super flat, dual time capability, one hand, green lacquered in 24 hour format, one hand, in 12-hour format, the watch can temporarily tell three time zones through use of the bi-directional rotating GMT bezel, and I recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. My wrist again is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see it will fit underneath the cuff. It's 100 meters water resistant, automatic winding with a 40 hour, 48 hour power reserve, and it is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. The insert within the bezel is made of ceramic. The characters are all deposits of platinum and bi-directional rotating. If you set the 24-hour hand to Greenwich Mean time, you can calculate three time zones simultaneously with this watch. All right, we go from Switzerland to Japan. This is one of the hottest watches of the year, the SLGA-009 White Birch. Very special, 40 millimeters in diameter, stainless steel. We have that famed Zeratsu hand polish case surfacing. So this is achieved by holding the surface to be milled directly against a spinning tin plate. It takes about three years to master that craft. So this is a handmade watch. It's 100 meters water resistant. It has the white birch dial, similar to the flora you will see outside the Shinshu Watch Studio in Nagano Prefecture, where the watch is made. All of the features of the dial are polished and faceted by hand using micrometric milling tools, and the seconds hand is actually fired stainless steel, fired to achieve a lovely lustrous blue. It is spring drive, and you can see it has that characteristic seamless, unstepped glide of a spring drive seconds hand. Five-day power reserve. This is the new version of spring drive caliber 9r a2 now a five-day power reserve rather than three case back power reserve indicator rather than dial side and i should mention this movement is more accurate whereas the old spring drive in its standard form was plus or minus 15 seconds a month this one is accurate to plus or minus 10 seconds a month the best of mechanical and quartz watchmaking it's only 12.1 millimeters thick and you can see it's a nice size on my wrist it would easily wear well on a smaller wrist a comfortable watch a well-balanced watch a versatile watch and yes it is very much a sports watch all in stainless steel including bracelet and clasp it is quite durable and a redoubtable thing on the wrist. All right, from one full bracelet sports watch to another, here we speak of Audemars Piguet, reference 
15202, and this is one of the earlier 15202s, you can tell there are a couple of things that mark it as one of the pre-2012 models. So the 15202 actually came out in uh, 2000, and until 2011 it was made as you see here. So, the differences, let's talk about them. First, you can see that the date disc is not the color of the dial, that's the big giveaway. Second, you can see that the logo is at 12 o'clock rather than 6. Third, you can see that the indices themselves are a little bit shorter, and we have these Arabic numerals outboard, that went away after 2011. Uh, we have a different clasp design, which you can see is the AP logo style, a single fold with a single trigger release, and then the rotor itself, which was wonderfully beautiful on these older 15202s, uh, you can see that it's been skeletonized and hand-finished with the A and the P logos. After 2011, AP went with a rather ugly, mostly machined rotor. I like this one better. JLC-based caliber 2121, ultra-thin, automatic winding, the base caliber is only 2.4 millimeters thick, free sprung with a gyromax style balance, and it has a 40 hour power reserve. Hands, logo, and indices are all in white gold, as are the bolts inside the bezel of this 39 millimeter watch. Now, of course, another thing that was later lost on the jumbos um, was the monoblock case construction. AP, for the same reason they did away with this lovely rotor, AP went to a three-piece case construction because it's cheaper to make. Well, this is one of the original monoblock cases where the case back and the mid case are all one piece and everything loads through the front. And in fact, you can see that uh, this watch is very much of the old style monoblock case, uh, Sternfrère, Petit Tapisserie dial. These were made in-house after 2012. Sternfrère was a company originally founded by those Sterns of Patek Philippe. Today it's a Richemont company, so AP wanted to sever from them. Back in 2012, they started making these dials in-house, but this remains the dial to own. Dark galvanized blue. We'll throw this watch on the wrist. It is only 8.2 millimeters thick. It's quite thin as I measure it. And of course, this is the closest living relative of the original Audemars Piguet 5402. Uh, it became less and less like the 5402 as Audemars Piguet cheapened it. But these early 15202s are really like living fossils. It's a coelacanth for your wrist. Super flat, super flush, and small enough that this could be considered a unisex option. A man or a woman could wear this jumbo. I would not describe this as a unisex option. This is for a man. 41 millimeters in yellow gold. This is a 2021 limited edition of 125 pieces. It's the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Chronograph, and you can see it has a pantograph cut Grand Tapisserie dial in green with a matching green date disc. This is the post-2017 version of the uh, Royal Oak Chronograph, but it's also the pre-2022 model. So you have that smaller sub-seconds. You have a uh, shouldered chronograph pushers, they're no longer screw downs. You can operate them without screwing them in or out. Screw down crown, 50 meter water resistance. It's surface swimmable and it is a dramatic thing. Now it does wear more like a 43 than a 41. So while it's rated as a 41, you need to think of this as like a 43 millimeter round watch. It is flat though. It's only 11.1 .1 millimeters thick, but it is massive. You feel that gold. This thing feels like a platinum watch from any other brand. That's how much gold AP has given you. Now you can see it's a solid case back. It's powered by a Frédéric Piguet, 1185. So column wheel, vertical clutch, automatic, integrated movement, high horology finish, five position adjusted, a 40 hour power reserve, and very, very, very thin. It is a good looking watch, but it is overpowering in its visual impact and its physical presence on the wrist. It is not for a shy man. Now, AP started getting back into yellow gold on the Royal Oaks back in 2016, and I think to date, this might th be their most dramatic application of yellow gold. By the way, the bezel bolts are made of white gold for a nice handsome contrast there. Okay, let's keep our line moving. We've got some spectacular stuff coming through. More bracelets for you guys, starting with the 2019 launch, a Bulgari Octofinissimo Skeleton. So 40 millimeters in diameter, 5.5 millimeters thick, a BVL 128 SK skeletonized movement. So manual wind, 60 hour power reserve. You can see there's a lovely engine turning a uh, circular graining or brushed pattern that's been applied. And then a nickel anthracite coating is used. We've got a power reserve indicator. It is a manual wind watch. And you can see that the case is all of ceramic as is the bracelet. Now this is wonderful because if there's one flaw on the basic Royal Oak, Nautilus, Aquanaut, Overseas, and Octo Finissimo models, it's that they tend to be scratch magnets. Not here. Not only is the watch wonderfully flat 
and, and comfortable. Being made all of sapphire and ceramic, it's feather light. It's got a almost murdered out look to it. It's a very California look for a Swiss made watch. Uh, the watch is exciting on the dial side. So while there is a lot to see on the reverse, you really don't need to turn it over let me do my best to get this in focus here. You don't really need to turn it over to get the most of, of the visual impact. It is a good looking watch on both sides and there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, just looking at it from the dial side, it, you have all the drama as the escape wheel and the balance are both visible. So this is like having the best parts of a display case back on the dial side. You can even see the coiling of the mainspring in the open barrel. Now, I think this might be the most versatile watch Rolex makes. As you see it here, this is the 2021 model year version of the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Sky Dweller. It's a dual time with a 12 and 24 hour double time zone display. And it's an annual calendar with a month and a date bi-directionally settable that only needs to be reset once a year during the jump from February to March. Three day power reserve, 100 meters water resistant, chronometer certification, it's got it all. Now the watch of course is the 2021 model because that's when they first offered the Jubilee bracelet on the watch. It's almost all stainless steel with the exception of the white gold bezel and you can see that the Jubilee still features the easy link tool free adjustment system that you get on the Oyster so there's no loss there. The watch includes a bezel that's actually used for setting and it's a very elegant system you can see there's a little index that fills the hollows outboard of each hour so 12 hours 12 months that's how it indicates the month so you're looking at January 1st now screw out the crown in the first position it just winds the watch uh, but in the second position with the bezel all the way clockwise, nothing happens. Now turn it once. Now I can adjust the date forward or backwards. Note that that little month index is jumping back and forth with the date. Turn it over one more time. Now I can adjust the local hour hand, uh, which will adjust the date. But note the watch is still ticking. I haven't touched the second time zone, the minutes, or the seconds. Turn it the next click. Now I apply hacking or stop seconds, and I can adjust both of the time zones together. Now the dial you see here debuted back in 2017 with the first steel white gold of the Sky Dwellers. It was previously a full gold model. We got this mostly steel model in 2017 with this fully loomed chromolite blue dial. And then we got the Oyster Flex strap in 2020 and the Jubilee in 2021. The watch is 13.9 millimeters thick and 42 millimeters in diameter. And the bracelet, though ostensibly a dress bracelet, is so sturdy you could use it as a sports watch and it vents better than an oyster bracelet because it has more gaps between the links. Really good looking piece. Again, if you want the most versatile Rolex that exists, it is this. Take a look at some time only watches, starting with one from Ming. This is the 2702, which was launched in 2021. It is a limited edition. Get a little bit closer here. A limited edition. And as you could see, stainless steel, 38 millimeters, 7.1 millimeters thick. This watch was a 200 piece series. And it was manufactured in La Chaux de Fonds by Schwarz Etienne from Ming, which is based out of Malaysia. That's where the design is done. Uh, the watch is, properly speaking, mostly Swiss. Now, the dial features a little raised track that acts as a sort of sector. Uh, you can see that there's a stamped guilloche outboard, but it has a lovely and lustrous center. The hands, like the, like the lugs themselves, and you can see that well here, like the buckle, the hands are evacuated. There's another little hollow at the end of the minute's hand. Attention to detail is strong. The cannon pinion is polished. The hands are primarily satinated. And then the watch features a, a Schwarz Etienne modified Peso 7001. So the bridges have been changed. The colors are all custom. It is a well-established center wheel, traditional architecture, manual wind Swiss movement with a 42 hour power reserve, a 21 six beat rate, 17 pivot jewels. And it has been adjusted in five positions. You can also see that everything's been customized from the cap of the ratchet wheel to the colors of the bridges and the plates to the polishing of the screws. It is a very appealing watch. I'll throw it on my wrist. It's a very comfortable watch. It's only about 44 millimeters from lug to lug in stainless steel. Easy to wear, very comfortable, super flat, super flush, unisex watch, men and women. Uh, also for those who prefer traditional discretion. If you don't like 40, 41, 42 millimeter dress watches, this is very much for you. If you've got a bit more budget, 
you might prefer this. Originally launched in 2008, this watch fuses, uh, it really fuses two different watches, one from two, uh, 1919 and one from 1921. So this is technically the historique American 1921, but like I said, it combines elements of two different watches spread two model years apart. So the dial, of course, has a lovely granular eggshell colored base, blackened gold hands, little Vacheron logo in rose gold, a lovely pre-Art Deco, this is more of an Art Nouveau font with a railroad track outboard and modified Breguet hand profiles. The watch is super slim, just over 8.3 millimeters thick, and it is 40 millimeters square. It has these lovely little vintage-inspired lugs. The crown is off-centered. The movement is the Vacheron manufactured caliber 4400, so you can see Geneva seal finishing, very impressive. 65-hour manual wind power reserve. You get a nice sharp inward angle around the center wheel, and then you get two more around the escape wheel. It's beautifully made and it earns its Poinçon de Genève. As you can see, the anglage is quite broad and beautiful. The screw heads are black polished, chamfered on their slots as well as their circumference. You could see that locating pins that are used to locate the bridges on the base plate, those little pins have been black polished on their tops and the Cote de Genève are lovely luminous. They're not flat stripes. These were clearly laid down with an abrasive wheel. And you could see several different sizes of engine turned perlage jumping through as well as satination and solarization on the barrel and the train wheels. Throw it on my wrist. Again, my wrist is 16 centimeters. This rose gold watch is what a dress watch should be. Now, I often say that Vacheron doesn't have a Calatrava, it doesn't have a Nautilus, it doesn't have a Royal Oak, a Moon Watch, or a Submariner. That is to say, it doesn't have a design icon that's been present since its first debut over decades in the brand's catalog. But this watch is important enough in Vacheron's history and iconic enough in the modern era that I can truly consider this to be Vacheron's design classic. This is Vacheron's all-timer. If you're going to own just one Vacheron and you don't need to swim, make it this. Two in rose gold starting with Patek Philippe. Now, there are several Calatravas. So while I say the Calatrava is the design icon of Patek alongside the Nautilus, what I really mean is the 5196 family. This is a more modern take on the Calatrava that was made from 2000 to 2006, and it's the 37 millimeter rose gold 5107R. So the 5107 is a little bit more modern. First, you can see we have center seconds rather than subseconds. We have a date rather than no date. We have a crown guard profile file for the crowns. So this is very different from an original 1932-96, which is considered to be the first Calatrava. And it's very different from the watch uh, that is basically today's 96, the 5196. This is very much a modern watch. Now, it uses the old Poisson de Genève blazon, caliber... 315. So the difference between a 315 and a 324 is that this operates at a 3 hertz beat rate and a 324 operates at a 4 hertz beat rate. You can see the Geneva seal on the movement, quick set date, hand finishing, a mixture of mechanical and hand finishing, to be honest, 45-hour power reserve, and a free-sprung Gyromax style balance. It's a good-looking watch, and if you want a dress watch of reasonable size, classical profile, and impeccable history and heritage, you don't need to pay $120,000 for a Jorn Chronomet Bleu. This is all it takes. Now, back in 2003, JLC launched the Master 8 Days Antoine Lecoult, and shortly thereafter, it launched a regular production version of that watch. So here, 41.5 millimeters in rose gold is the master eight days. Eight day movements have a decades long heritage at Chagere Le Coult, dating back to the first quarter of the 20th century. Here we have an eight day movement based on the movement designed for the 70th anniversary reverso, the septantième. It's been redesigned to fit a round case, so the bridges and the plates are round. That is what JLC does. It prefers to fit movements to cases. Now you can see a Cote de Soleil or a sunburst motif radiating out from an imaginary center point atop the balance. We have fired blue screws, Cote de Soleil engine turning. Uh, we have a machine but handy and attractive anglage and then black polishing on a swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. Here we have an eight day rated power reserve though in fact these are well known to run for almost 10 when fully wound. Also it's a quick winder. There are some extended power reserves that take hundreds of wines to get five, six, seven days of power reserve. This watch can be wound up to its full indicated eight days in 55 turns. We also have a double digit date, Longa, 
took JLC's first patented double-digit date in the early 2000s, or I should say in the early 90s. And then in the early 2000s, JLC designed a new one and patented that to use on its new generation of watches. So the watch includes a quick set for the double-digit date. It has a day-night indicator. It's a power reserve indicator for its nominal eight-day rating. And surprisingly, for what is clearly a dress watch, it is really well-loomed, though it is big. And whereas JLC now includes pin buckles, on a lot of watches, even complications. Uh, back then, JLC gave you a full folding clasp. So 41.5 is on the large side for a dress watch. I would recommend this watch be worn on a wrist no smaller than mine. My wrist is 16 centimeters. You can see those lugs are pushing out to the edge, and that's probably the best view to get it. But you can also see that the watch is fairly thin, so it will fit underneath the cuff. You just need a broad wrist for this timepiece, and this is as good as it gets. Manufacture watchmaking from the watchmaker's watchmaker, and just an awesome looking movement. You also find this movement in the Panerai PAM 190, 197, and 198 Rodumere eight day models. Okay, here's something different. This was launched back in 2017. It is the Gerard Perigo Neo Bridges Automatic Titanium. So it has the bridge profile that you would see on the three Golden Bridges tourbillon, uh, but it is not a tourbillon. And being a Neo Bridge, it's designed to be forward looking. So we have a case that's 45 millimeters in diameter, but only about 12 millimeters thick. It's really slim. Its profile is media blasted. You can see that the lug hoods are polished. Grade five tie, lighter than steel, but also more scratch resistant than steel. It has one of the most dramatically boxed sapphires I've ever seen. You can see it rises almost vertically from the bezel, and then it has a domed profile up top. All the action on this movement is on the dial side, but you can see that this caliber 8400 was designed to fit this case specifically. The watch has a micro rotor automatic over at 10 o'clock, and you can see the single barrel over at uh, 2 o'clock. It is a 50-hour power reserve. It has a full balance bridge to brace well the balance, and you can see that the watch is quite well loomed. The hands at center are open with an evacuated, almost bow-like profile. They're satinated on their top. You'll find there's media blasting on the case, and there's also media blasting on most of the bridges and plates. We have solarization on the rotor as well as the barrel, satination on the wheels, and you can see that the motion works, which operates the hands. It's visible underneath its own bridge structure. The bridges have a little bit of a bow tie profile. All screw heads are black polished, and you can see that well here. But you can also see that there is mirrored Anglage on the edge of each bridge, so while the tops may be media blasted, the edges are actually mirror rounded, which is quite impressive. And again, this is a 50 hour power reserve. It's a broad watch at 52 millimeters from lug to lug. I think you need a wrist at least the size of mine. Any smaller, and you're really going to have lug overlap, but it is very flat, very light, and very comfortable. Sticking with titanium, uh, this is a watch that came out for 2021. There were two 250 pieces li in limited edition, orange and green. So this was the 250 piece limited edition orange accented reference 3815 Breguet Type 21. So the watch is based on the long running military inspired Breguet Aviators chronographs. Back in the 1950s, Breguet was not the only brand to build the Type 20 chronograph, but they were the best known because they made the most and they stuck with it longest, uh, continuing to supply parts and service into the 80s for French military aviation. Now this watch is made of grade five titanium. It's 100 meters water resistant. It has flyback chronograph capability, but take note, this Lamagna 1350 base doing business here is Brigade caliber 584 QA. Uh, it has a central register for minutes, so you have radial display of chronograph seconds and then a radial display of chronograph minutes. We have a 24-hour dial that is not part of the chronograph that lets you know whether the time displayed at center is day or night. And you can see right here, we're at about 9.02 p.m. because you can see that little index is in the second half between 12 and 24. So let's see that flyback functionality. Restart, reset with a single push of the trigger. Uh, the watch does have an automatic winding, 48-hour power reserve, and a bi-directional rotating aviator-style bezel. Let's take a quick look at the dial in the dark. It's well loomed. You can see that the chronograph minutes register is loomed, as is the bezel pearl. Uh, the bezel is an aviator style. It moves in both directions, and it is effectively a count-up bezel. So you can see it counts up from 0 to 60. The dial 
has a date with a quick set. When you turn it all over, you can see that Breguet's really started to finish these Lemagne-based calibers better. In the first few decades of using Lemagne 1340s and 1350s, uh, Breguet mostly just cased them up as they were, but especially since it's gone to display case backs on Type 20s and 21s, it started finishing things with stripes, engine turn prolage, black polished screws, original rotor designs, and you can even see on the steel components of the chronograph, and this is probably your best angle there, the edges are mirror unglaged and the tops are satinated so the finishing is becoming as impressive as the history of the watch it's genuinely something you pay for you can see this has been converted to a free sprung architecture with a free sprung recessed bolt balance adjusted in six positions and it has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring 48 hour power reserve we have a deployant clasp right here we'll zoom out a little bit check it out on the wrist and it's actually just over 48 millimeters lug to lug, so maybe not as big as you imagined, and very light given that it's made almost entirely of titanium and sapphire. Okay, from Langa, we have this spectacular 1815 tourbillon. Now this is a model, 39.5 millimeters in rose gold, that was launched in 2014. The dial is made of solid sterling silver, the hands are fired steel, and if you look, not only do we have a hacking seconds tourbillon, but the little seconds index zero resets when you stop the movement. You can see that the uh, tourbillon structure itself is a one minute tourbillon beating away at 21.6. The finishing is best in the world. It literally does not get better. Some match none surpass what you'll see right here. The base of the tourbillon features a capstone that is a real cut diamond. We have a three-quarter style bridge with golden chiton fixing some of the pivot jewels and you can see freehand engraving underneath the tourbillon structure. You'll also appreciate that there's engine turning in one two different sizes and that we have mirrored anglage on the few edges of the bridges. We have both black polished screws and fired blue screws and the watch wears well and easily on my wrist. Very comfortable. It's a watch that you can wear with some degree of discretion as it's not too large. In rose gold, it has richness, but not bombast. And this is a tourbillon whose true design is predicated on precision timekeeping, both in terms of how it's set and how it runs, as it's one of the rare long watches that uses an overcoil hairspring for concentric breathing of the hairspring in any position and very even timekeeping. The watch includes a deployant clasp, which is not a universal feature on long watches and is considered to be an upgrade on most models. Before we bring on our second Langa, let's talk about Debatun. This is a model that came out in 2015, 42.6 uh, millimeters in diameter. It's only 11.5 millimeters thick, and this is the short lug setup that we rarely see from Debatun, meaning the lugs go from 51 millimeters lug to lug to 47 millimeters. This is a very rare optional spec. Now, the watch is made of blackened zirconium, which is close to indestructible. I suppose anything's possible, but I've never seen a scratch, scuff, or abrasion damage on one of these watches. No black zirconium debitune has ever come to me with evidence of a marring mark. The watch, manual wind, has a six-day power reserve, a spectacular solid disc silicon balance with a white gold rim, one, two, three shock protection springs, two self-adjusting barrels, so you cannot accidentally overwind this watch. There's a little stub power reserve indicator. It travels from that jewel to this jewel, and then there is a full-size power reserve indicator on the reverse side, six days of power reserve, and you can see the underlying mechanism with surprisingly extensive traditional finish. While the watch is avant-garde, the finishing is true to tradition, from black polished Cote de Betun to mirrored anglage on the edge of the bridges, uh, mirrored finish on the balance bridge, as well as the flanking springs for the triple parachute. We have little globes of titanium that act as the hour indices, and de Betun makes its own cases as well as its own dials and movements. So everything you see here is made by de Betun. The spherical moon phase has an adjustment interval of 1,112 years. There's a little pusher on the case flank. Set it and forget it. You'll never need to touch it again. And of course, the watch features a two-element hairspring shaped by hand. Because of its off-centered profile, it breathes concentrically like an overcoil, but without the shock susceptibility and the thickness of an overcoil. Throw this watch on the wrist, 
it wears easily. I could recommend it even for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. It's super flat and being made mostly of sapphire and zirconium, it's very light. It's important to remember that fewer than 3,000 Debatun watches have been made since 2002 when they first started building watches. And they only make about 200 to 220 watches a year now, so exclusivity is assured. Okay, now we're into the old time greats. Right here from a Longa Unzona, I have the 101.005. It looks like a Longa 1 in platinum in 38.5 millimeters, but here's the thing. This is the model made from 1994 through the end of 1995 when they transitioned to display case backs. Solid case back Longa is one of the most tradable and collectible eras of German watch design ever. This is one of the first four models from the most influential name possibly ever in modern German watchmaking. The original four models were the Saxonia, the Longa 1, the Arcade, and the Pour la Marie Tourbillon. This watch, enduring to the point that is considered an icon, even though it only came to market in 1994, the heft is incredible as you get that solid disc of platinum on the reverse side instead of what is frankly a cheap sapphire. Trust me, the sapphire display case back of a watch costs about 30 euro. This, well, it's a solid disc of platinum. The movement inside caliber L901, three day power reserve, stop second. There's a pusher adjuster for the double digit date, which as I mentioned earlier in this cast, was actually donated somewhat against their will by Jager LeCoult, watch executive Gunter Blumlein, who worked at both companies, declared that he was going to gift JLC's double-digit date to Longa to help them get off the block as a modern manufacturer. So we have a pusher adjuster, so you can change that now iconic panorama datum, which is a German way of saying borrowed from Jeger LeCoult. But it is a beautiful watch. At 38.5 millimeters, anyone can wear this thing, and they're flatter with the solid case backs and thinner with the solid case backs than when they have sapphire display case backs. These don't come to market often. And when they do, it's generally only at auction. Solid case back longer ones made in 1994 and 1995 are scarcer than hen's teeth on a rooster. The dial is made of solid sterling silver. The movement is just as beautifully finished as you imagine. So they're not trying to hide anything. This is just what German watchmaking was in the early to mid 90s. All about modesty and quality. So that was a pioneering piece from Longa, and here we have what might be the most innovative early watch from F.P. Journe in its earliest form. This is the landmark Chronomet à Résonance. This is one of the first four dozen made. 38 millimeters in diameter and platinum. It has a rose gold dial that you can see features a little bit of the thick varnishing and the color gradients uh, that are emblematic of these early models. Now, it is a dual time. You can set the two dials separately, but that's not really the point. The movement, which you can hear see in its original brass form uh, has two barrels with two clicks with two ratchet wheels two drivetrains two escapements two balances and the idea is like pendulums or metronomes placed in proximity they will synchronize to each other so they beat in opposition and everything is symmetrical they are coupled together by resonance which was a world premiere in a wristwatch that used balances as opposed to a clock with pendulums and uh, there's a little pinion at the center a gold pinion screw and then a black polished rack and you can adjust the distance between the two free sprung balances and the idea is that if one beats in error or deviates because they beat equal but opposite uh, the other balance will correct it and they will stay coupled to the tune of less than five seconds per 24 hours now because that can take a little bit of time to occur seven to ten minutes for them to actually couple side to side you might have seconds hands that aren't synchronized so this little flyback was provided by fp journe so you can fly back and synchronize the seconds hands now, you can see that this is brass movement. That was discontinued after mid-2004. Rose gold replaced it, but brass is more valuable because fewer were made. You can see just how shallow the engraving is on the case back. This was indicative of a super early F.P. Journe timepiece, and you can see that the case back is stamped 00. Uh, that represents the year the case was made. Uh, they stopped stamping the case with the year of manufacture in about mid-2005. You can also see French hallmarks and the maker's mark of Eleanor. 
That was present from 1999 to about mid-2008 on F.P. Journe watches uh, when Journe just bought Eleanor and moved it to Geneva. So what's discontinued or what is different from a modern resonance? Well, let's see, we've got a resonance one dial, resonance one movement, brass caliber, shallow case back engraving. We've got a year of manufacture stamped on the reverse side. We've got a French made Eleanor case and oh yeah, it's 38 millimeters, which is no longer offered. This watch is the total package. Remember, if you wanna buy a watch for less money, but contribute to a good cause, Go over to Eric Koo's Loop This, and Eric Koo is auctioning my Zin EZM 1.1 to benefit the feeding and nourishment of Ukrainian refugees. Guys, time out, Tim out. Thanks for logging on, and have a great weekend.